It's 8 o'clock, good evening, and welcome to LJ News. While much of the focus of Australia's border closure has been on the difficulties citizens have returning home, lesser known are the stories of the growing number of Australians looking to leave permanently. I was a UN war refugee. Australia was a place that rescued my family when we were in need, but that Australia is dead, 41-year-old William says. Australia has now taken other families that are suffering, and instead of finding a way to get them here, they've returned their back. They're actively shutting people out, she says, buying back tears. I no longer feel like Australia is my home. For the past five years, Williams has divided her time between Australia and the United States, where she has a home in Arizona with her second husband, Matt, and his sons. The arrangement was working and she planned to keep it for another decade as the boys grew up. He's finally said to me, let's get out. The UK is going to open up a lot sooner than Australia. The world will be back to a new normal and Australia will be still trying to figure out what a post-pandemic plan looks like, she says. Speaking from hotel quarantine by Zoom after returning from a three-month visit to the US with her boys. The trip cost them $50,000 in cancelled and rebooked flights and quarantine. We did do the trip because we felt like a change of scenery. We did it because we're desperate, she said. When it was one month or two months, well, okay, maybe it wasn't urgent for you to see your husband. When it's two months and your kids haven't seen their brothers, suck it up. When it's going on its second year, now it's a crisis. She says not going would have meant a total of three years with the brothers not seeing each other and out of her marriage. That's a prison term. The 34-year-old gave birth to their first child, TJ, in March last year and has not been able to introduce him to his grandparents.